of India. A group of young men came to live together in a dilapidated house at Boranagore in North Calcutta. They were forsaken as some worthless, destitute boys. But they were molded by the ideas and ideals of their spiritual master, Sri Ramakrishna Paramahansa. Sri Ramakrishna had passed away a few months ago. But before that, he had instilled in them the love for God, the spirit of renunciation and brotherly love. One day, at the Kashipur Garden House, Sri Ramakrishna distributed ochre robes to them and sent them out to beg food. In this way, he himself initiated them into a life of renunciation and laid the foundation of a new monastic order. The resolve of these youngsters to form a brotherhood was strengthened a couple of months later at Artpur on a Christmas Eve. In Baranagur Mat, the days were of extreme struggle and hardship. They lived on what chance brought to them. But it could not shake their resolve. Sri Ramakrishna's words constantly rang in their ears. The goal of human life is God-realization. Forgetting sleep, they spent the nights in spiritual practices. They immersed themselves in meditation. They studied various scriptures to quench their thirst for truth. Their love and longing for God found expression in their devotional songs. Under the able leadership of Swami Vivekananda, these young men took the vows of monasticism and started a monastic brotherhood in the name of Sri Ramakrishna. The middle of the 19th century. India had been occupied by foreign powers for a long time. Indian culture and its values had got concealed under layers of ignorance. The West, however, saw rapid progress in the fields of science and technology, spearheaded by the Industrial Revolution. Discord prevailed among the followers of different faiths. The scientific spirit of inquiry shook religion and spirituality to their roots. Time was right for somebody to experimentally verify the fundamentals of spirituality and establish the very essential harmony of all religions. Swaroopini, avad. 
अवतार वरिष्ठाय राम कृष्णाय ते श्री रामकृष्ण वॉज बोर्न ऑन द एटीन फेब्रुवरी एटीन थर्टी सिक्स इन द विलेज ऑफ कामार पुकुर अबाउट सिक्सटी माइल्स फ्रॉम कैलकाटा राम कृष्णा He had a spiritual disposition from his childhood and was disinclined towards formal education and worldly affairs right from his early days. In his youth, he was appointed a priest in Kali Temple at Dakshineshwar. God is worshipped here as the divine mother. Sri Ramakrishna developed a deep devotion towards her. His intense longing culminated in the vision of the divine mother. Sri Sarada Devi, popularly known as Holy Mother, was the spiritual consort of Sri Ramakrishna. She was born on 22nd of December 1853 in Joyrambati a village in West Bengal in due time after her marriage with Sri Ramakrishna she stayed with him in Dakshineshwar and served him as a devoted wife they lived immaculately pure lives and their relationship was entirely spiritual She is regarded as the first disciple of Sri Ramakrishna. Once Sri Ramakrishna ritually worshiped Sarada Devi as the divine mother and thus awakened universal motherhood in her. Sri Ramakrishna's strong inner urge impelled him to follow various spiritual discipline. described in hindu scriptures and realize god through them his spiritual practices led him to realize oneness with god he then habitually lived in an exalted state of consciousness in which he saw god in all beings as bees swarm around a fully blossomed flower Devotees now started coming to Sri Ramakrishna in Dakshineshwar. There was another group of young boys who later became monks. The foremost among these young disciples was Swami Vivekananda. Narendranath Datta, who was later on known as Swami Vivekananda, was born in Calcutta in 1863. Swami Vivekananda was a prodigy endowed with many talents. He had acquired a vast knowledge of different subjects including Indian and Western philosophy and history. At the threshold of youth, Vivekananda passed through a period of spiritual crisis. He was assailed by doubts about the existence of God. It was then that he first heard about Sri Rama Krishna. Chalo ne jo 
One day, Vivekananda's quest for truth brought him to the doorstep of Sri Ramakrishna. He asked Sri Ramakrishna straight away, Sir, have you seen God? The reply was, Yes, just like I see you, only more intensely. Under the loving guidance of his master, Vivekananda blossomed into a spiritual luminary. Thus began the pure, unselfish, guru-disciple relationship between them. In 1886, Sri Ramakrishna passed away leaving his disciples in deep distress. Swami Vivekananda took up the responsibility of guiding his brother disciples. A dilapidated house in Boranagur was rented. This house became the first address of the monastic brotherhood known as Ramakrishna Mat. There were 16 monastic disciples of Sri Ramakrishna. Monastic tradition started by them combines some of the best elements of the Eastern and Western monasticism. Its emphasis on service, universal and modern outlook, synthesis of yogas, harmony of religions and such other features make this tradition a distinctive one. The Ramakrishna Mat was established but Vivekananda's mission was not complete. He heard the inner call for a greater mission in his life. After staying in Boranagur Monastery for about two years, he set out on a long journey as a mendicant monk for the exploration and discovery of real India. During his travels, he was deeply moved to see the appalling poverty and backwardness of the masses of India. It was clear to him that the real cause of India's downfall was the neglect of the masses. After traveling through the length and breadth of India, one day, Swami Vivekananda found himself on the southernmost tip of the country at Kanyakumari. Here, he meditated for three days and nights and the complete picture of his future mission unfolded before him. Vivekananda realized that cultural exchange between the East and the West was vitally necessary. India will gift her spiritual wealth to the West and in exchange, the West will share the knowledge of science and technology with India. His speeches at the World Parliament of Religions in Chicago made him famous as an orator by divine right and a messenger of Indian wisdom to the Western world. My ideal indeed can be put into a few words and that is to preach unto mankind their divinity and how to make it manifest in every moment of life. Swami Vivekananda spent nearly three years in USA and England spreading the spiritual wisdom of ancient India. In 1897, Swami Vivekananda returned to India. In response to the enthusiastic welcome that he received everywhere, 
he delivered a series of lectures in different parts of India, which created a great stir all over the country. Swami Vivekananda wanted to channelize this enthusiasm. He expressed, My whole ambition in life is to set in motion a machinery which will bring noble ideas to the door of everybody. On 1st May 1897, the Ramakrishna Mission was founded by Swami Vivekananda. Once, after meditating in the shrine, Swami Vivekananda walked back and forth and whispered loud enough to be heard. If there were another Vivekananda, he would have understood what Vivekananda has done. And yet, how many Vivekanandas shall be born in time? Once, in a divine ecstasy, Ramakrishna uttered, Service to man is service to God. Vivekananda expounded, You may invent an image through which to worship God, but a better image already exists, the living man. You may build a temple in which to worship God, and that may be good, but a better one a much higher one already exists, the human body.